thought I'd do this little random video. Uh, the kids have been super interested in all the 3D printed stuff, so uh, I printed a couple, um, a couple of grappling hooks off Thingiverse for them, and they weren't super great. A lot of 3D printed stuff just doesn't hold up, but um, I wanted to just take a take a stab at just designing one real quick, and I figured I'd just um, do like a little walkthrough in, uh, in Rhino 3D here and show you all how I would recreate something like that. Um, I'm just going to kind of wing it here and see what happens. But I figured I, I'm in no means like a trained, um, trained in AutoCAD or went to school for it or anything. So a lot of stuff self-taught or some of the other makers that I've worked with have helped me out and uh, gave me some pointers along the way. Um, yeah, Nicholas Swan, he has helped me out a lot with Rhino. So I owe him for a lot of what I'm about to show you. Um, he could probably explain it a little bit better than I could, but here we are. Um, but we'll just get right into it. So um, what I want to do first is just make a just make a circle, and this will be for the main post that runs up that the that the rope would go through. Um, starting to pour down rain here now. Uh, let's see. Okay, we'll have that, and then I'm gonna have. Um, I, I like the design design things pretty much from a top view because um, then everything when I pull it into fusion I, I extrude everything up um, just lets me you know, get a better feel on I, I'm just used to the tools uh, with Rhino as opposed to designing in 2d and fusion uh, some of the features I like more in here and it's just easy enough to just take a DXF file over there um, but I'll kind of just as I'm working here I'll try to explain some of the stuff, the, some of the nice features of Rhino. Um, so this O snap is nice because it allows you to, um, you know, if you're just kind of hovering over something, it'll let you pick different locking locations on the object. So in this case, you know, I'm, I want to lock in the center, so it just automatically finds it. And this will be more of a, a base that will sit at the bottom bottom of the, the grappling hook so uh, I'm just kind of like I said eyeballing it once I get it close I'll be able to just scale it out whatever size I want to before I print it and from here we're gonna make some rectangles um, coming out in the four directions here for where the hooks will come out so I'm just trying to visualize just a, like I said a top view on this and then uh, just make changes and kind of go with the flow here so not super super tutorial but figure just watching stuff happen helps it's helped me a lot and I might not do this how a lot of other people would and that's fine you know as long as you're getting the same end result that's that's what matters so this is a nice feature you know you you get near you're trying to move a shape and you get near a certain point and it'll it'll automatically grab it like it'll find the end I like right here, it'll probably yeah, find the middle of that line. That way you can just, you can center stuff up without having to guess or, you know, nudge it around with your key, with the arrow keys or something, um, which actually Rhino doesn't let you do anyway. So, um, but okay, we'll get this guy. We'll get it put in the center here. And then, if you know, just like any other um, software, if you hold shift, it, it locks it pretty good. In place, but I'm gonna get I want to get this point right in the center. So you just gotta hover it around. There we go. So it locks right where you want it. And then from here, I will just mirror this. Actually, I'm gonna back up a step. I think what I'm gonna do is put in um, where the the actual hook parts, like the barbs, will come out. Um, so I'm just gonna put like a couple couple squares here. I'm not too sure where I'm going to go with this yet, but um, we'll see what happens. And like I said, in, in Fusion, I can go in and edit the 2D and um, you know make any changes I want to in there, but we'll go with this for now. I think this might be... I think this might be good. Eh, yeah, okay. So just do a mirror of this go up here transform mirror it and to anyone that's watching this that's not interested in learning it 
I apologize because it's just lengthy and it's just kind of grueling. But like I said, instead of doing like a speed lapse, I want to show some of the different some of the different stuff and just walk through actually doing some start to finish. Okay, so now we got that. Another feature that's nice in Rhino is you know if you're um, selecting something like you just want to select that circle. As long as this field from if you're dragging from left to right, um, you know if you don't uh, highlight anything in its entirety, it won't highlight it. But like if you want this square, if you want these two circles, as long as whatever is within these, within your rectangle here, it'll grab. But if you're going from right to left, it'll highlight everything. So if you just go grab these two, whatever it, it highlights at all, it'll it'll select it. So that's a pretty nice feature get in here and just select these and I'll hold control or hold shift and grab those two rectangles copy and paste that which uh, control Z con I'm sorry control C control V copy and paste for short and then we will rotate these and the same deal will go right in the center if you hold shift it'll lock you you know 90 degrees that and rotate it okay starting to look kind of like something if you could visualize that from the top view and then I'm gonna select all of these and this outer circle okay and then um, as far as trimming like there's there's lines here that I want to get rid of obviously <coughs> excuse me and that is this tool right here trim and whatever line you touch wherever there's an intersection it's gonna it's gonna delete and you can do the same thing you can highlight multiples we'll get rid of all of these in here okay this guy this guy all right now I can uh, I've done a little bit of 3d work in Rhino uh, you don't necessarily need fusion you can you can do 3d work in here and do modeling and all that stuff I am just not real familiar with it and haven't done that in here and I, I just think that um, fusion is just a lot more user-friendly for 3d work so um, like I said it might be counterproductive to use two different versions of two different um, softwares to to do it but but whatever works you know there's people that use other other software that aren't these and, and like I said the same result but this works for me, and if, uh, since I'm going to put this on YouTube, nine chances out of ten, you're you're searching for something related to Rhino or Fusion, and you ended up here. So, all right. So at this point, I think that that's, I think that might be enough to to get it over into into Fusion and play around with it some. So let's do that. Let's take this, we'll, uh, highlight everything, export selected. And I'll save it in my CAD here as a grappling hook. Make it a DXF. Save it. Okay. And let's drag Fusion on over here. Okay. So in Fusion, you know, I just uh, file new, new design open it up and then I'll go up here to insert or actually I'll just click this insert a DXF and then you pick um, you pick what origin or I'm sorry which plane you want it to go on so I always just work off a uh, work off right there go up here to this little folder pick your file we'll go into CAD files do the grappling hook all right. Now just hit OK, and there we have it. And you can see I'm highlighting these different sections, and they'll allow me to extrude them all differently. Um, so I think what I might do is just grab this center post first. So I just right-click, press pull, and I mean it's as simple as that. So you just drag it up to where you, however long you think you want the grappling hook to be. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it, visualizing it, maybe, um, maybe right there, something like that. 
And now that I'm looking at it, I think that it might be a hair too. Um, it might be a hair too wide. So let's just cancel this. I'm going to go in here and edit this shape real quick. And to do that, and this is just what I want to do on the fly because sometimes things don't go as planned or you have changes. So I'll just show you real quick how you can edit right here in Fusion. So I just right click that, edit the sketch, and I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to click that edge and drag it. I mean, you can see how simple it is just to make little changes over here. Um, and I, I, one thing I forgot to do was leave the, I wanted to leave these lines because I want to be able to have this this main circle here um, in its own shape to to keep as the base without having these arms over here. So I am going to I'm going to make a circle center center circle just like I did in in Fusion on the center. I'm sorry, just like I did in Rhino. I want to snap it right to the edge. So, okay, that doesn't look very centered. Let's try this again. Maybe this circle is not totally centered. Let's look. Where is the center of that? Okay, it looks like it is off center. So let's just delete that circle. What do you say? Clear that out. Let's start over. This is why I like this, like raw, uncut. You know, N nothing's pre-planned. Okay, maybe that. Okay, I don't think I designed right on the, right on the, right on the point. And um, and Rhino. So let's do a different type of circle. Three-point circle. So we'll do there. there okay I guess I could have just did a two-point circle but you get the idea do the center Let's see if it'll let me find the center of this okay it looks like it's right there let's just double check that's what's nice about fusion is it will give you suggested points to lock to also so we'll go right maybe I don't want it to be too small to where it's weak. So we'll go right about there. And this is just, like I said, for the kids to play with. So it's not anything that requires any real structural, you know, maximum weight capacities. It's not going to be pulling anyone up. Um, up here, stop sketch. Okay. Now let's pull this up. Get a little view again. Yeah, I think it's almost about the same size as it was, but all right. Okay, and then where'd the rest of the sketch go? It hides it. As soon as you edit one and you make a body from a sketch, it'll hide the sketch. So you just make that visible. Now I'll grab this section. This is going to be like the main base area. And I'm going to pull it up here too. And you, you have options here. You can have, like, I ha like to have it join, or you can have it cut. So it'll, um, I guess not in this case since it's bigger, but for example, if you had this shape here first, you could pull this this shape down through it and like cut that hole down through. Um, but we'll join it, or you can make it a new body so it'd be two separate pieces, but we will join. Okay, hit okay. And then these will be the, the little arms on the bottom. And I guess maybe they could be about the same thickness. We'll press them up. Maybe we'll just, yeah, maybe we will just have them be about the same. So that was uh, some effort that wasn't needed there to add those lines in there, but we're winging it. We just go with it. Okay. And we might, I might go in and change that. You can always get back in and edit these features or go back into the sketch and change it. Um, we'll grab these and pull these. And then these are going to be your hooks there. Now it's starting to 
Now it's starting to make a little sense, I think. So now that I'm looking at it, and once you get stuff kind of going, you start seeing other things you want to change or do, and that that's just part of it. It's fun to just get in and mess around with it, see what happens. So now I kind of think I want to put like a kind of a point to it. So we can just pull this out from here. And this will all make sense here. It might look weird now, but you'll see. All right. And now that I'm looking at it, I kind of think I want to put another little notch or something on this. But let's let's just do some chamfering and some fillets and see what it starts to look like. So let's go up here to fillet. Okay, let's just round this. Uh, I, I like to go and just smooth all the all the edges so there's no hard edges. We'll do that. And you can obviously, if you noticed, you can go down here then and um, you know, right click your last edit, or I'm sorry, your last feature, edit it. You go and change it to wherever you want, and it'll yell at you if you're trying to do something beyond its limits, which infusion tends to be. It'll, it'll get weird with chamfer sometimes and not, and not allow them in certain areas for some reason when you, there's plenty of room for specific radius. Okay. And um, I saved this this part for for fusion also, so I'll go ahead and just click it right. That way, it's a straight on shot of the um, at this post, and you can just right click a body hole, and you can put the hole right wherever you want it. And you can shrink it up. Let's get a look at this from a different angle once. So I just want to just big enough to pass some cord through and still kind of be somewhat strong. So like at this point, you can see this here and this here is going to be the weak points. So let's bump it up just a hair. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit more. It will go in between those. And you can get in here and manually type whatever you want. And since this isn't scaled, I'm kind of just winging it too. So that looks for uh, kids dragging toys around the house and breaking things. That should be that should be good. Fit a piece of paracord through it. Um, the last one that we printed it had like just this little tiny this little tiny horseshoe up here, and it was like barely a couple millimeters even holding it on there. So I ended up it snapped off, and I had to drill a hole in them anyway. And I was like, ah, maybe we'll just make one. So that's why we're here doing this now. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer these corners down here. So we'll get the chamfer. And you can hold, let me see if you can, yeah, if you hold shift, you can grab, um, grab multiples at one time. I'm sorry if you just in general click them, it'll automatically grab them. Okay. Like I said, there's no specs here, it's all visual. So I think on this one, you can actually you can change if you want equal distance or if you want to pick two distances. So, like in this case, I want this to be a little higher. So, I kind of like how that looks. Hit OK, and then it automatically does that to all of them too. Okay, now you might say, oh geez, this is really weak here. So we'll just go into that corner now and chamfer it to kind of match it a little bit. Let's get a better angle here so we can see them. This guy, and if there if there's a part you can't see, if you hover, it'll it'll grab the lines still. So makes it nice. You have to keep rotating everything around. Uh, let's get an eyeball at this. There we go. Front shot so we can get it kind of close. And I'm sure, I mean, you could write down stuff, whatever angles they were and what you want it to be. And OK, 
Okay, something's got funky here. What's going on? Looks like I selected the wrong. Okay, Justin, what do we do here? We can see here this area is bigger than this area. So it looks like maybe the two distances thing didn't work. Let's back out here a minute. Okay. Two distances. Like this guy. This guy. This one. And this one. Let's try this again. Maybe it wasn't making... Let's just look at the bottom ones to see if it's... This is okay. I don't know why that's getting why that's getting funky. Hmm. Two distances. Okay, now that looks okay for some reason. And I, I mean, I will say fusion. It gets it gets a little a little glitchy at times. Yeah, you can see it was just just changing. Okay, so it looks like when it's adjusting these the bottom one and the left one, it's changing the opposite chamfer on the other ones for some reason and I don't know why so let's just go equal distance for to not hold you guys up any longer for that torture okay so I, I mean if you want to do that I guess you could do them one at a time maybe it makes more sense so we'll grab these and some of you might be more experienced with fusion be like oh you know it did that because of this and feel free to leave that in the comments because like I said I'm no fusion guru I'm kind of like I said winging it I know enough to to do what I need to do with the, with this software so uh, okay that's that's looking pretty all right so hit okay let's go in here and I'm gonna chamfer this this guy here give it some a little bit of a point to it Something not, it's not going to poke anyone's eye out because I won't hear the end of that. Um, let's do another chamfer. And I'm, this is all just visual stuff, you know. It's be what we're after and now that I'm thinking about it um, as far as printing this you know the 3d printer it prints from the bottom up so in my head I'm kind of thinking about how it's actually gonna print and this hole looks funky not sure what happened there but that's what's nice you go back here you can edit this you know hold on, let me hit OK you go back here to where you made that hole and you can edit the feature. I just don't think it pulled it through the whole way and it didn't. So I'll pull that through and it'll cut it. Alright. So when you print something, you print it from the bottom up. And if you're looking at this, uh, this isn't any kind of support to be printing from. Um, so I think I am actually going to go back and um, make a little bit of changes before I actually print this but I won't hold you guys up on that um, just to have it a little bit more flat I might even print this post and these pieces here coming down the bottom I might print that separate and have this this feature here that has the four arms like sleeve down over it um, and then just kind of glue it but that seems a little excessive so I don't know I don't have the answers yet I think what I might do is just, I might just nix this, um, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling because I, I do, um, 
this is just how I work sometimes. I'll, I'll think aloud, change things, and it's just, I don't know, just how I work. Let me go in here. I think I'm just going to remove this whole feature, to, to, to be honest with you. So let's delete that feature. Let's just take this back up. Let's just let's just get rid of that. We don't need that for this, you know. I think that'll be, I think that'll be plenty. I think I might actually take this whole bottom though and thicken it up just a hair. So we'll grab everything that's flat here, extrude it down a little bit. Okay, let's cancel that. It's grabbing the sketch. What I want to grab is the actual body, like see I was grabbing this whole part of the sketch, I just want to grab this face here, so I'm going to hide the sketch and then it'll just let me grab this whole section that looks a little more meatier I think uh, be a little stronger like that, so let's, let's run with that alright now now just because I'm going to go in here and do some fillets on smooth up some of these edges um, I think I'm gonna do a chamfer here to grab some of these make some of these hooks so let's hit all these corners drag them in now we're starting to look like something And I think that this one will print good, having a nice flat base. This this gradual angle, I don't think that's going to be a problem to print. I think it should be it should be fine. So let's just look at this a little more. Uh, let me see if this will let me do the two distances again. If it's going to get all funky with me, okay, it looks like it's all right. Okay, let's do that. They look like they're all the same. So, like I said, you know, that time it, it didn't mind doing the two different angles. Just something glitchy with, with it. Or there's a logical explanation that I was missing. So these, I'm just going to pull these up a little higher. And it will automatically... change any of the the chamfers to, to fit along with it okay I don't mind that it looks good okay I'm gonna go in here and just smooth out smooth out these these corners here and this is all unnecessary but just to show you how user-friendly this is to to make these little adjustments um, I think I'm even gonna do that to this top one just to smooth it out less hard edges r riding on anything I mean you know I mean it's almost like this stuff's almost a little too easy when you when you're watching it done but it does take time you know it, okay I don't mind the looks of that get a f little bit of away from it and see if it looks functional yet I don't think it looks too bad and then for fun I mean we can go in here and get real fancy and do fillets on these outside edges just to like I said relieve any of the is it not going to let me grab there we go So you can really, I mean, in, in little time, I mean, make something that's, you know, super flat. And like I said, we go back just to pop over to, like, that's what we started with. So a little bit of time in here, fooling around with it. Um, you can get right back into, where'd it go? Where's Fusion? There it is. Okay. Get something looking like something. All right, let's go with that. And I don't think there's too much else that I want to do. Uh, maybe, 
I mean, maybe while we're at it, we'll just hit these, hit these pieces just to round them a little bit. At some point, I don't want it sliding off of stuff, but. And then this this file here, I will actually I'm gonna put it on. Yeah, see what I mean? How it starts to yell at you if you take a fillet too far or a chamfer too far. It starts to starts to complain a little bit. But I think that's pretty good, even just to knock that edge down, smooth it up a little bit. What's with this one? Why? Well, I mean, why not? We're in here. Let me see what it does to it. Eh. Let's not do that. All right. I was going to say, um, I will put this. I have a Thingiverse account. And um, yeah, I'll just drag it over so you guys can check it out. So these are like the ones that I was looking at. Um, I think, that, let me see if I can find the one that that I printed for printed for the boys. Um, and like I said, no, I don't want to. Maybe I just shouldn't. It just it had a had a point on the top that that wasn't very strong at all, so it, they just snapped off. And um, I just kind of saw one in my head a little bit, and that's how we got to where we are. But yeah, this is a Thingiverse.com, and I, I I'm not sure what my account is on here, but um, in the description of the, of the video, I'll put. I'll put where it is in case anyone has a 3D printer and they want to go download it and give it a shot. Um, but, yeah, this is where we're at. I might put a little chamfer on this on this hole just so it doesn't snag on the rope too much, doesn't want to cut it. How did that happen again? Where's that hole at? Let's edit this one more time. Why did that pull that through? Okay, okay, okay. All right, chamfer. This one, this one. And we'll do equal distance on it. And I don't think that that's going to create any problem 3D printing that. Um, if there's gradual, gradual angles like right here where it starts to go from flat, you know, from straight across, where if you like picture the sliced in a bunch of layers going up. Uh, you wouldn't think that it would be able to print hair like hanging out over, but it does it so little, you know, 0 0.2 millimeters at a time. So it'll gradually build it up this way, and then it, once it reaches here, it'll connect. So that should should work out pretty good. But yeah, I think I think that's where we're at with it. And let's see here. We'll hit OK. Let's um, let's save this. Save it under 3D printed stuff as grappling hook. And then um, the only thing that I do in here is I change, I go to document settings and I change the units to millimeter because that's what Cura uh, works with. Hit OK. All right, and then all you have to do to export this to 3D print it is, I think you can even like make 3D print. Converts the selected, let me have it again. Selected body to a mesh body and outputs to STL or a 3D print utility. Uh, maybe this works, let me try it, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, no, I don't like, I don't do it that way, but whatever. Okay, so I just go into the body, whichever body it is, since it's only since it's all one, everything is kind of fused together and welded. Um, just click that, you right click it, save as STO, and this is all if you're using Cura to to 3D print. Uh, that's that's what I use. It's worked well for me. So we'll save as an STO. Okay, and let's go to 3D files. And we'll make this coke grappling hook. Let's save that. And let's go to Cura. Yeah, I mean for, for software that's free, Cura has been a nice a nice slicer. I haven't had any wish issues with it with printing anything. Um, so to each their own. You know, everybody has something they that they use that works for them if you are already 3D printing. But this is, uh, you know, this video is more 
for anyone that's looking to get into it that you know is trying to put two and two together where I was at one point before I started asking a bunch of questions so here we are okay and I've kind of played around with a lot of these different settings and you know anyone that that 3d prints a lot you know obviously you have your own settings that work and just in my climate where I'm at with the garage temperature and stuff this, this stuff just all just seems to work well for now uh, it can get a little finicky at times d depending on that the humidity and whatnot but this is a pretty well-rounded profile um, I apparently at one point thought it was sick so I called it sick PLA <laughs> laptop um, this is back when I was designing some stuff on my laptop but yeah, 0.2 millimeter height, um, wall thickness one millimeter, bottom thickness one millimeter. So, I mean, feel free to copy all this stuff, uh, compensate wall overlaps, um, fill gaps in between walls everywhere. Uh, this one, I think we're going to, since we want it to be somewhat, somewhat strong, I'm going to do 80%. And I've always used this tri hex. Uh, it just seem it just seems like it's it's worked well for me. Um, just printing on PLA, so these temperatures I've found to be good. Uh, I'm printing on a CR10 iteration. Um, it's it there. It's pretty temperamental, but I used to be able to print at 60 degrees where uh, Celsius, whereas this one has a default of 45, and it's it's actually worked. So I shouldn't complain. Uh, print speed, I'm fine with 85, and fill speed 100, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, do the skirt. And, yeah, okay, well, let's, let's start with, and if you're just opening this up, depending on what printer you have, um, you know, obviously you got to load what printer you have. And then it'll send it'll set up some default settings, and then from there you just tweak it. But you know you hover over one of these, you can get in here and adjust all of the settings. You can have settings in there that I have no idea what it would even do to change, but that's uh, that's on a whole other level. Me, it's been pretty turnkey, so I'll just go with it. So we'll open the file, find my grappling hook. grappling hook okay brings it in there whatever um, origin you had it set at and, and whatnot but you can just rotate it to where it sits in the bottom and there it is and it looks like it should work out pretty good and we don't know until we print it so all right Let's see here. Let's slice it and just see how long it takes. This size. Two hours and 22 minutes for that little guy. And it is using a, a good bit of material. I mean, it's pretty solid, but um, I think maybe we'll just go with it. Go with it there and see what happens. I hate to make it. I don't want to make it too, too big. Maybe shrink it down just a little bit. The kids will, they don't really care too much. As long as it hangs on something, and let's see what that did for time. Okay, two hours. That nah, we'll just we'll just let it run like that. So from here, you just um, I don't have my thumb drive in, but if you have a thumb drive in, it'll just say like save to removable device, and you just do that and take your little card over to your 3D printer or send it USB, however you do it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. And I'll just kind of do a little time lapse after this video, uh, just showing showing it starting to print. I won't get into, you know, the actual 3D printer, but uh, there's not much to it. Like I said, it's pretty turnkey. Um, if you have a 3D printer, you probably already went through all your directions as far as how to level the bed or if it's self-leveling and blah, blah, blah. But... Um, this video is going to be pretty lengthy just from creating this, so we'll, uh, we'll get this saved and I will let you guys know whenever it's done.
right, so here's what we ended up with. And it worked out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, pretty solid, I mean, for what it is. That 80%, I think, is what I printed it on. So it's, it's, it's practically solid. And for what the kids are gonna be using it for, it'll, it'll pull some toys around and whatnot. But yeah, I'm real happy with how it printed it. It bridged the gap for that hole pretty good. So, but yeah, anyone that was watching, if you're, you know, into CAD or uh, into, into any of this, the modeling and whatever, uh, 3D printing, let me know in the comments if there's anything uh, you guys want to know from based on what I showed earlier, or, you know, if there's anything you want me to do in like a next video, because I'm not opposed to, to just showing some other stuff. I know it was a little grueling, it was a long video, but um, hopefully it helps someone out and uh, you know, one of the pointers that I was showed along the way helped someone. But thanks again for tuning in. Have a good one.